All right. It's Wednesday, April 24th at 6. You got to leave the door open. Public commentary. Uh, Wednesday, April 24th at 6.02 p.m. Calling to order the City of Franklin Technology Commission. Uh, we can do the roll call. Uh, Scott Mead is currently not here. Uh, Greg Stroud. Present. Alderman Michelle Aikman. Present. Bill Webler is excused. Laura Galusha is excused. James Rayberger. Present. G. Strana is excused. Uh, Andy Pelkey is not here. John Parney. Present. Three cores not, not here. And there's me. So we have a core of four. Thank you. We will do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There are no citizens in our audience present today other than those on the commission. So next agenda item is closed. We have the minutes from the February 28th meeting in your packet. I make a motion to approve the minutes as written. I'll second. Motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes are approved. Item number four, uh, five and six are in an attachment, but item number four is the engineering document management system and scanning proof of concept discussion. Now, hopefully, uh, Lisa did send the email out that instead of printing all the, the documents out, for, if you really, really wanted to see the detail, we put them out onto the box.com server and then it created a link for it. So I'm just going to go over basically the high level documents for it and extract on going into basically the depth of, of the actual proposals on it. But I did take a couple of screenshots of, of the actual proposals itself. Um, <clears throat> BMS, we've been looking at it for a long time. Uh, IT has long recommended the, rec the implementation of a document management system going back to 2017. Uh, the goal was to replace the original Microsoft Windows file server uh, and all government documents archived within the DMS. Uh, the current problems that we face with existing legacy Windows file servers, um, documents are not stored in OCR format where digest searches can be performed on the contents of the document. Searches can only be performed on the title of the document and any data when you save it, Microsoft Office brings up the dialog box and you can save metadata with, with your actual document. Uh, file discovery requires use of the Windows search service. Uh, the service is extremely resource intensive and requires large indexes. Uh, the service is slow and very inefficient. Uh, the, context, the context and type and category of the document is provided by the location of the file in the hierarchy of folder structures. Moving a document to a different uh, level tree uh, or location removes the original context of the file because the folder gives the context. Uh, and there is no existing taxonomy of document types and categories. Uh, it is a free-for-all. For those of us that do not know what the word taxonomy, I kind of pointed to what a card catalog is. That you give a classification to a document type. There's going to be an arch type. There's going to be the document type. There's going to be subtypes as you actually go, go down to it. And based upon the tags that you actually put on the document, based upon this big, huge taxonomy of all the different types of documents that you can actually create out there, it's like a Library of Congress system does it on subjects, subject matters, you can actually then turn around and put relevancy and insight into the, what's actually inside of the document without actually opening it up. Uh, there's a great deal of file duplication. Permissions are set at the department root folder permissions. Uh, it is very difficult to share documents between multiple departments, resulting in copies of documents in multiple locations. Uh, there's currently no easy way to implement automatic file versioning. 
uh, version history is kept either in the title or in the creation of the duplicate file. Uh, forms are either uh, kept to scan documents that are filled out using pen and paper. HR loves those. Uh, there are some PDF fillable forms, but these are rare. Forms cannot be easily routed between departments uh, for completion or approvals. And open records requests is a time consuming and tedious. It is nearly impossible to flag a digest of documents based on the contents of the files. This requires human knowledge on where a specific document is actually located. Note, one of the reasons why we're actually doing for the department that we're doing is Debbie, a very key person within the department, is going to be retiring. So as people retire, that human knowledge walks right out the door. And document archives are expo uh, exposed out of the Franklin website. Uh, are again, copies of the originals that are stored on the Windows file servers, keeping the documents in sync as a manual process. One of the main reasons why it's taken this long and since we've been working on it in 2017 is a lack of funding. And there's various reasons for this, but a lot of it has also come down to we had, when I walked in the door, we had so many infrastructure problems to deal with that there just wasn't enough money to turn around and do everything that everyone wanted to turn around and need. So it's like, well, the Windows file server is working well enough, so this kept on being the can that got kicked down again and again and again and again. For, for multiple years on it because it was something that, yes, you can still stumble along with the existing file server and make do, but yet we know there's much better ways of doing things. So IT has attempted to get the funding for seven years for a DMS, which has constantly been denied in the capital budgeting process. Uh, DMS also has a sordid history in many municipalities where the product does not satisfy the needs and is replaced by a different product. Per Peggy Stino, uh, when she was in the city of West Dallas, they went through three different document management systems in her tenure there. Often the problem is not the DMS or the technology, but is how it is configured and maintained. It's strongly recommended, uh, it's strongly re recommended creating a taxonomy before the project is started, and to have a person familiar in library information sciences evaluate the categorization and the tagging process. If you set it up wrong, good luck fixing it later on down the road. Uh, the project is normally preferred at, performed at an enterprise level and has a scope of all electronic documents and processes for the entire organization. This is a pretty big bite to swallow. Uh, importing existing electronic and paper archives is extremely time consuming. There may be millions of documents that have to be scanned. The quality of the scanning process and the correct tagging can vary uh, greatly depending on who is doing the work. Uh, it is not uncommon to outsource this to the interns who do not know the actual data, aka what went on over at Oak Creek. So some of the ones that we have looked at over a course period of times, I'd say this is the, the, the short list of the ones that we've actually turned around and looked at. Uh, one of them was James Imaging System with DocuWare. DocuWare is heavily used out there and is currently used in Greenfield right now. Uh, OPG3 uh, proposed online microfiche, which has been out there forever. Uh, HBS wanted Microsoft SharePoint. Uh, Navient OnBase, very, very good system, extremely expensive. That one was also used by the state of Wisconsin. Uh, CDW Cofax, I use Cofax over at, at Saputo. And the one we're looking at, primarily because of cost, is one from Kanaka Minolto called Square 9. Now, I did look at Square 9 back in 2017. I cannot remember for the life of me what, what, what was the original vendor for it. But we have seen Square 9 before on it, and it has come up on the short list over the course of years. But Kanaka Minolta is proposing it with us today. Uh, in 2019 and 2020, focus was given instead of the document management system uh, to replace the ERP system with a new product, the Govern Open Forms product. Uh, which we were looking at originally for an ERP, migration was abandoned after it was clear that Harris Systems was creating vaporware. Uh, migration from Govern to BSNA was the primary focus. Instead of DMS, ERP then turned around and actually took the front stage, which is another reason why ERP was not funded during that time period. Uh, OCR. A lot of this kind of metamorphosized, but we needed DMS, but we first originally looked at it at OCR and the copier capabilities and discovered we might want to be looking at DMSs. 
Initial conversations surrounding DMS typically started when looking at new copiers that had OCR scanning capabilities. Copier vendors would then recommend using various DMS solutions as part of workflow management package. James Imaging was originally selected as the main copier vendor at that time on Toshiba copiers due to their broader experience in document and workflow management. Uh, the city wanted more than one uh, wanted more than just a copier vendor. We wanted a person that could actually or a company that could help us work with document management and, and document imaging processes. Uh, it was recommended by the vendor instead of a copier or a dedicated uh, OCR server performing all OCR functions. A DMS would be used for this function and archiving all documents received from the copier. This was the first identification of a need for a DMS server over a traditional file server. Uh, today, many workflows are supposed to be performed within the various modules of BSNA. Uh, BSNA stores many of the documents within dedicated databases, for example, business licensing, permits, and inspection forms. Hence, there is an overlap between files stored between the ERP versus the DMS. Uh, it is best that the DMS and the ERP can interface with one another. This does add complexity uh, and sometimes a question of where the workflow should actually be performed. Uh, there may also must be a shared taxonomy between the two platforms. So we decided for 2024 to start small. Instead of doing it for everyone, we're going to just focus on this one department, maybe two, depending on how much money we had. But we will try to start small and do this almost as a pilot program. So for the 2024 capital budget, the Common Council approved a small-scale budget building a DMS as, as, uh, as if successful, starting adding additional licenses and expanding this out to other departments. Uh, Square 9 was chosen from the capital budget uh, as the DMS provider, as this was the most cost-effective solution that could easily scale out and integrate with the Franklin web server if needed. Integration with BSNA can be done via web services communication, aka SOAP. Um, Engineering was chosen to be the department that would be the first to migrate to the new DMS. Engineering was chosen because it is a department that has a fair number of custom document types and diagrams, but most of these are not being stored within BSNA. So we don't have to start with BSNA integration from the, from the get-go. Uh, most of the forms are single document and, and some are legacy, single department and some are legacy. These do not need to be incorporated into a large interdepartmental workflow. Uh, the engineering department, along with planning, is at the very beginning of the business development process. Hence, documents uh, in the DMS can be exposed to other departments later on if we choose to do so. And the departments are constantly receiving open records requests. Hence, having a DMS with tagging will definitely facilitate open records requests. Konica Minolta Business Solutions. Now, we have Konica Minolta, the copier vendor. They actually have a whole different division of their company, which is the actual business solutions side. And another one that we frequently see them working on is also cybersecurity, which is also another branch of their business solutions side as well. Uh, Konica Minolta Business Solutions offers large-scale scanning and digit digitalization services. Uh, the company has the ability to take libraries of backfile documents, off-site, professionally scan them on large capacity machines, correctly metadata tag all documents, and return the files back to the customer in their original state. Since they are the ones that are helping build the DMS for us, they know the taxonomy, they know the tagging, hence they can then turn around and do the file scanning for us and import them directly into the DMS. Kana Kaminolta uh, performed two site audits, one for planning, the other for engineering. Uh, within the engineering archives, it is estimated there's a 1.5 million, do million documents being stored at City Hall. Uh, Konica Minolta document scanning process is a Six Sigma certified process. It has multiple controls in place to guarantee the best image capturing possible, and all scanned documents are retained in their original file groups. The services guarantees that the image capturing is professionally done, unlike other services where it may be upside down, mismanage and maybe wrong file put into into the wrong document it's something goes into something completely different they guarantee keeping all the documents together and removing all the staples and making sure that everything is, is grouped back the way it originally was and large scanning large documents and blueprints is extremely difficult 
and requires specialized equipment. Product Minolta can handle these document types. So they have very large scanners that they're doing like each yes. size drawings or larger. Now, <laughs> when we originally got the capital request and I knew something was wrong, it was too good to be true because they were looking at saying, we can do 1.5 million, million files and scanning and we're only going to turn around and cost you $12,500 to scan it. It's like, there's no way. There's no way. But that's literally what the quote in the original proposal said. And as we started digging into it, we had to change the proposal because we had some changes along the way, like changes of the entire licensing of the product suddenly changed on us. But as we got into it, it's like, no, that, that money to turn around and actually import the files, that's importing what you have on your file server and moving in, into the document management store. That's not taking your paper archives mm -hmm. and actually breaking it down. So we actually had them create a second proposal for us. One was for the document management, and one was for what it, would it cost to turn around and scan 1.5 million documents. And there it is, $232,000. Quick question, Jim. I'm still <laughs> sure. <laughs> do, you, do you have any idea what percentage of engineering documents are physical hey, and what are real place? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Well, hold yeah. it because we don't have a You can ask your question, though. Um, do you know what percentage of the engineering documents in scope are digital and what percent are um, physical today? Uh, I can tell you in size, there's about 282 gigs worth, worth of, of documents in there. I'm going to say it's about 150,000 files. Okay. For it versus paper, or is it going to be about 1.5 million? Oh, okay, so the vast, vast. I guarantee 1.5 million wasn't them counting right. all the documents. That that's getting the folder, seeing what is, and typically what they have okay. seen based upon the size of the cabinet and how, how how much it holds. What they estimate might be in that in that drawer for a file. So yep. that still is an estimate. Uh, yeah. And this is complete mm -hmm. history. This is not like only going by five years or only going. By that's everything. Now we have to be careful too, because they, they have multiple they have pull out drawers. They got an entire roll that has nothing but blueprints sure. and large scale documents. Right. If I move into other departments for it, they also have banker boxes full of documents that are stored in the old jail cells too. Yep. So they don't always store them directly on site in their departments mm -hmm. as well. That we had to make sure that they didn't have other archives floating around some somewhere as well as well. So. We knew there's no way we're going to pay 232000 but this is a good baseline because Common Council is eventually going to want to know how much would it cost if we actually had to digitalize every single document that we have? How many millions of dollars would it cost if we outsourced it to have someone turn around and take every single piece of paper like they did in Oak Creek when they built their, their brand new city hall and the mayor said we are not taking one piece of paper over there with us, we are going to scan everything, put it into the DMS, and now we will move over to the brand new building. We are not taking that load of paper along with us for it. It was a very honorable goal, but it had bumps along the way for it. But 232,000 to turn around and, and have it professionally done. Now, we can break things out of there that we know the largest amount is, is gonna be the first two, two lines up there mm -hmm. that some of this stuff can easily be scanned by other people, department people as well, and we don't have to have them professionally scanned. They also recommended not doing it on the photocopier uh, as well. That yes, you can scan on a photocopier, but this photocopier does not have the correction software on it to turn around and correct a lot of very common problems that you're gonna turn around and run into. Um, they take this but, offsite, run it on their high-end, Machines. Right, which it's we awkward. obviously can't afford that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we can take a couple categories, all right, stuff that we can't easily do ourselves for it, like the large scale blueprints off of it. Um, that requires a very special scanner, and there's no way you're going to get a blueprint on a photocopier. Mm -hmm. It just is not going to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. So, what are you, what are you going to do with anything that comes in a roll? What are you going to turn around and, and deal with that? I mean, they got blueprints left and right. 
down blueprints, maps, da 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 And some of it, too, you have to make a determine, is this really something we want to digitalize, or is this really junk that we truly don't need? So this is just taking everything. This isn't playing my favorite game, Blue Garbage, Bad Garbage. And you keep what you want to keep, and you pitch what you, what you can actually turn around and pitch. Do you actually or? pitch it? Because we went through this with my... You have to be uh, careful if it's a government record. With my last employer, we scanned everything back 15 years, took the rest of it offline, and we were told by the uh, executives we couldn't get rid of it. It had to go into an off We checked with the state. Somewhere. The clerk's office actually check with state. We have to be careful because it's a government record. If it's mm -hmm. a government record, it has to be maintained forever. Yeah. If it isn't a government record, if it's notes or something along that, that lines, then you, you can just get rid of it, period, if it's not a government record. If it's a government record, if you scan it, and it is in a completely and totally, and the, unfortunately they still are using terms that are well out of date, photographic, image of the actual document of it, then you don't need the original copy of it. So per the state of Wisconsin's record retention rules, if we scan all of this stuff eventually and then have it electronically and it's all OCR'd for it, and it has to be a good OCR too, not, not a cheap OCR for it. And some of the OCR is gonna be kind of tough because we even got stuff in there. I've seen a missile silo plans Back when, when we still had the Nike missiles here, here in Franklin on it, they still have those documents. Some of that is like on blue sheet paper, mm -hmm. on almost like a mimeograph yeah. for it, and then with some handwriting notes and some of it in typewriter. So when it's looking at this, it's going to have to understand what's a picture, what's handwriting, and what's text. That's going to be more complicated OCR than your standard everyday. Standard some, some of that you don't even OCR. I mean, little little add-on notes on documents. Mm -hmm. you, you might turn off the OCR on that because right. it's it's almost spurious to have that searchable. But I don't know. But okay, yeah, this is uh, it's not gonna be cheap. No, but I actually believe it or not, I actually was uh, so, I, at first it's a quarter of a million dollars. You gotta be kidding me. It's like actually that's a pretty impressive number. I'm not. Depends sure. on how much. Manual handling they have to do with it. A lot. Yeah. A lot. If memory serves, there's no data classification program at currently, right? No, not a Windows file server. No. Does this allow you the ability to introduce that as well? That's what the taxonomy is. Yes. Well, the green, yellow, so red, you create the ta taxonomy of it, and then you specify what tags get assigned to the document. So then you can start bringing things up by tags. Right. You For example, up front. Yep. Exactly. Not only do I want to categorize the document by type, I may want to categorize the document by project. And I want to categorize the document by owner of it. So if I wanted to know, I need to see all project documentation, because I have an open records request, for the building of, a, of the 7-Eleven. Right now, I have to send Debbie out to the files and say, please show me where you stashed all the documents about this project building the new 7-Eleven. For it. So with the tagging and the taxonomy on it, if it's done correctly, and there's the key, then you should be able to very quickly bring up all the documents pertaining to that particular project. I guess my question around data classification is more from an information security perspective. So, you know, some companies do like a simple green, yellow, red. And then that helps inform holistically how you, who you can share with, how you transfer data, things like that. That was more of the crux of my There point. is a little bit of sensitivity within the department. If a department wants to share the documents and you can't put ownership and view permissions on it, you just have to realize anything there that we're retaining is a government record and okay. you can get from an open government re records request. Okay. So there is no top-level security, classified, so or anything like different that. Different than a private It's company, just all it public. Okay. All right. On it, which that actually does simplify things. Fair enough. The yeah, document you, retention you, 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 is the real gotcha. I think, like in HR, you still have right. HR yes. rights that you yes. want to have. PII and HIPAA. Yeah, for health department. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. You'll get into that. We'll get into that. Not but not in engineering. Not in engineering. Risk register. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Also, the police department, they have 
our, their own Pro Phoenix RMS, which is a document management system for it. So th they do have a file server, so maybe someday they would like to go on to this. They would be the last ones I would actually port on here, one, because it would be most complex, but they already have a document management system with Pro Phoenix. This would just be redundant, except for all the stuff that they're throwing on their file server, which, depending on which department you are, has most likely just been exports out of Pro Phoenix to begin with. Or video. So the total budget uh, is seventy one thousand eight thirty five. Uh, the actual project goals for this was to create a file taxonomy for the engineering department that can easily be expanded. We'll see you a little later on. Uh, noting existing document types defined within VSNA, uh, building the Square Nine VMS server on a local VM, and creating the necessary disk volumes to hold the MSSQL databases because all the documents are stored in the databases. Uh, import existing file archives stored on the engineering file share on CH file 01. It is estimated the bulk of the import of the tagging will take approximately five days to complete, done by the vendor. Uh, we will be buying a Kodak professional scanner uh, that contains specialized software for automating the bulk image capturing, uh, which will be installed within the department. Uh, output will then be configured over to the DMS. This will allow them to start scanning some of their own document archives. It will automatically look for skewing of pages and all looking for things that are upside down. And then it also allows with batch importing of it, and you can even bar scope, barcode scan your, your, your import file on it, and you can put on separated pages of it so it knows when you're turning around and bulk scanning these, these inputs, which what is one file group and which is another file group, and then it will know how to turn around and tag for that specific file group that you're having in there. So that software does not exist on a copier, and it's that little bit, little, little, little bit more of AI built into it um, that will hopefully help offset some of the problems of scanning that we've seen in other municipalities. Uh, and any residual money within the budget can then be dedicated to the business solutions of Konica Benolta Business Solutions to perform professional document scanning for large-scale files that are too difficult for the city to scan. So when we first looked at this, we, they had licensing as a concurrent user. Then Square Nine in 2024 decided, let's change our entire li mo licensing model. And instead of concurrent user, they went down to seats. So the first two lines is actually for 30 users and then also the software maintenance that actually turns around and goes with it. Uh, and then we're looking at the Kodak scanner with it. And I'm having a hard time focusing here with my contacts. One year site maintenance on it. Uh, installation of the Kodak camera. Uh, Capture Pro year support on it and Capture Pro remote support. And then down here we have the global search access portal if we want to turn around and integrate it. Uh, within our uh, City of Franklin website for that. Uh, and that also would then turn around and require a license and a maintenance plan on it as well. So total dollars for just core pro projects, including the printer, would be $41,000. If we do the add-ons with it, then we're looking at a total of $47,000 for it. And that's all I have the document management piece. The rest of the money, since we had 70, 71, would then be used for contingency within the project, extra hours if we turned around and actually instead of the five days of, of scanning and installation support on it. Uh, and then if we don't need it, then we would then turn around and use the rest of that money to help them scan the large documents that cannot be scanned easily by, by themselves. So is this money that's shown here just to bring engineering up on the DMS, or is that for the entire city of Franklin? Just engineering. So it's $41,000 $41, to bring in just engineering with the licenses. And a lot of the cost on that increased because they changed the licensing model off of that, off of turning around and doing an actual Windows file server for it. And this is five... Days of yes, yes for for the actual conversion of the documents, and like who's going to do things like educate and 
and train on, on good practices for the taxonomy. Right. And now the taxonomy we're already building ourselves. Well, and that yet we've we've actually spent that time with Kyle Kaminolta having coming up with, with the taxonomy and the next portion of it is actually bringing it over to So they're just doing that Jennifer free, correct. Free. Okay. Uh, and how they about they had to in order to create the scope. And then this training here, operator training on site, one one day or one instance of it. Um is that adequate to train the staff on how they need to use the, the scanner to get documents in the yeah, right way? There's going to be about like four to five people that will actually be doing the scanning of it. So you have some people that are ancillary that will be using the DMS for it, but they aren't going to be a regular user of it. Yeah. The ones that really are going to be is, is going to be the two front receptionists for it, Christy and Debbie. And they're the ones that and one intern that they really want to turn around and get going so they can start turning around and scanning images. One of the first things they're going to want is actually to order the new Kodak printer. So there's going to have to be some training on the Kodak printer, and then there's going to be actually using the DMS and then importing things into the DMS from the printer, which, which will have to be supplemental training. When's Debbie? Next year. Jim, is there any specific action you're asking the Technology Commission? It looks like it's all said and done. It so is all said and done. This is information only. This is just discussion because this was decided already through the capital process for it on it, and a lot of it, some of it's like, all right, seventy-one thousand dollars for one department and not for the for, for the entire city for it. But when you're looking at it, you're getting a printer, you're getting software with it. You're getting the, the document management system. You got the conversion of the files with it. And we may actually start on some of the large scanning, professional scanning mm -hmm. of some of the document archives for it. So this would then be a start for it. And then we add on other departments as we see fit. If this blows up, as it has done in other cities as well, then we know to stop it. And, can't, and then we can easily get our data need to be able to make sure we can get our data out of the document management system, put it in, into something else, or otherwise we have it in, in one DMS and we aren't expanding it out to other areas if it just becomes too much of a problem. Do you know some of the lessons learned from those other municipalities? One, don't let the interns turn around and do all your scanning for you. Okay. That they found documents all over the place, doesn't make any sense, completely and totally sure. mis mistagged from it. Um, Another big one that, that I'm actually seeing uh, for it is um, they turn around and try to do too much where they didn't look at it as, all right, we're doing this as a document management system product project to do OCR and storage of the document. They started doing all sorts of online workflows with it, mm. and that got away on them. Mm -hmm. It's hard enough trying to do the online workflows and mapping out your workflows and getting a business analyst up to understand your workflows in an ERP system. Trying to do that with an ERP and then link into a DMS on it, you're over your head. Another one, big one is taking off too much all at one time. Mm -hmm. Instead of just doing one department, they decided to do the entire city, and that then becomes an absolutely gargantuan project that then stymies them and mm -hmm. brings everything to a, a grinding halt. And then you may satisfy and optimize the system for one department, but then another department doesn't like it. So finance may think it works absolutely great, but the legal department absolutely hates it. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like maybe you've, there's no reason to worry. I mean, there's always a reason to worry that there, you know, anything could happen, but you know, with that knowledge going forward and fighting off a smaller chunk, keeping it focused and not letting the interns play. Exactly. It's just, Better. And then trying to get professionals to help us along right. the way. Yeah. Okay, so the, one of the traps we fell into at Zebra Technology is this: is the people who are doing the scanning were scanning at one setting on the scanner. They weren't differentiating between black and white, grayscale, and color <laughs> documents. Yeah. Um, and so the color the documents AI will automatically would, choose that for them. Literally come out black, and then they. They prioritized everything to grayscale, which was great, but it produces more. Which 
it has all sorts of problems, but it produces larger data files. Yep. Yep. So, yep, huge file. And we do have money for disk drives and adding additional space. And that was my personal question. How much additional disk space is this potentially going to turn around and eat as we turn around and have it? Are we suddenly going to see a, a sudden large bloat coming on the sand, which is another reason why we're starting small, because we know the three-part sand is rapidly becoming end of life at this and needs to be replaced. And I don't want suddenly a bloat project suddenly eating up every ounce of disk space that we have on the three bar. Well, you know what you're currently struggling with? You said what? Quarter million? 250. Uh, that was gig. Gig. Okay. So, and but you estimated a number of documents. About 100,000. 100,000. So you got 1.5 million incoming. So, I mean, that's not necessarily a direct correlation, but you know that it's going to be a fair amount. Yes, that's going to be a fair amount and when you talk about the entire city. And I realize there's no way that two people with one printer are going to be able to scan $1.5 million. Yep. When you're, I'd be amazed if they did it. $220,000. Two and a half. Did they say how long it would take to do that? 1.5 million? They did, I can't remember. But there's some pre-work that has to be done by the yes. city, right? No, uh, no, they do the pre-work. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a white glove where they come in and they come on site, they go through the drawers, and then they, they turn around and organize and box the files up and organize it, and they'll take it and put it back exactly the way it was when it started. Wow, that's great. Okay. That's why they're in business. <laughs> it's kind of coming all the time. Any further discussion on that item? All right, we'll move on to item number five, which is the penetration testing, external penetration. This is the reason why we're here tonight. Yeah. Okay, we probably all remember this. Um, 2022, uh, we did a full external penetration test with Foresight. That's what actually started creating our risk watch matrix was some of the feedback that we got from, from the various audits. Uh, and a partial internal penetration test was executed uh, using a sampling method to out, uh, outline potential network-based threats. It was the first time the city of Franklin initiated any form of security penetration testing. Uh, the results of the study eventually became the base of the risk watch matrix. Uh, the test was performed twice in order to allow for immediate remediation of critical and high-level issues. Uh, once the major problems were corrected, a second test was performed to guarantee the success of the security hardening. Uh, the strategic technology plan indicates that external penetration testing has to be performed every two years. This is very timely as the Palo Alto firewalls are being actively replaced. EPX is installing new Fortinet firewalls in a private fiber ring and internet access uh, using external WAN routing is being performed over a public ring. Uh, the Franklin uh, School District ECC building is being the pop for the WISCnet ISP internet access. Uh, due diligence requires that a full penetration test be performed once TPX has successfully migrated all offices to the new ring. Uh, the test will confirm the level of security of the new environment. Been chasing a bit of a moving target. Uh, WISCnet has provided the IP address range of 216.56.29.0. I know that's just going to flip off your tongue for the rest of the year. Uh, for all devices being addressed on the public ring, in addition to the WISCnet access, Spectrum services will continue to be subscribed to with SD WAN backup uh, in the event that WISCnet ever goes down for a long period of time. Uh, spectrum lines were recently upgraded at the PD, City Hall, and Water Utility from coax to fiber. The current five-address legacy subnet range was retained, but for each site, a uh, new five-address range has also been included. Uh, the Internet service with WISCnet is scheduled to be turned up on 419. That is now complete. Uh, it is anticipated the ring will go live on May 22nd. Uh, internal and external firewall addressing is still in the process of being assigned and firewall to ISP routing uh, using BCP is still underway. Uh, many vendors need to uh, need the exact IP address count 
uh, for both the firewall and any NAT addresses in order to generate a quote. And this is saying, I don't have it. It works still building it. Uh, some vendors are satisfied by testing everything within a subnet range. Uh, for 2024, $19,500 in capital has been assigned for external uh, and any possible uh, internal penetration testing, giving any available funds. This is close to the 2022 allocation. Now, I should say, I'm happy with all the quotes that I could go with any of them. I'd be perfectly happy with, with any of them at this point. So I think all of them did a very good job on, on, on their proposals. Uh, the 2024 critical success uh, factors are similar to those of the 2022 testing. The primary focus is on external penetration testing of all firewall and exposes the systems via NAT. Uh, a sampling of internal systems will be performed as time and budget allows. Penetration tests will utilize both an automated, automatic, automated uh, scanning and manual human-based intrusion techniques. Multiple scans will be formed both uh, as an initial and final report. Any critical or high vulnerabilities detected during the first sweep will be identified with an attempt to be made a date to remediate them. Uh, the final report will indicate the success of the remediation and any residual issues. Internal penetration testing will be performed over three shifts. This guarantee that PCs that are turned off may be on the network during later scans. All penetration testing will use non-destructive techniques that will not compromise data integrity or the stability of the operational systems. Very important at the PD, uh, which then therefore this excludes denial of service testing. Uh, reporting, initial and final report should identify the types of vulnerabilities detected, the severity of the vulnerability based on the impact and probability of occurrence, uh, any associated security bulletins, categorization to the MITRE framework if available, and recommended remediation actions. Very important for me. Uh, manual penetration testing should use lateral techniques to determine the depth of the security compromise. And all security analysts must be CJIS certified. Each analyst must have a criminal security background check performed upon being hired and are bound uh, to non disclosure agreements. Jim, is social engineering included? I'm doing that right now with no before. Okay, perfect. How skilled are the people who are going to be testing? They all have various certification degrees on it, certifications for it. Foresight is the company that we last used uh, okay. off of it, and they have very prominent security credentials. All of them are certified for security penetration testing. You just don't want somebody doing it new. No, I'm not getting two men in a truck. <laughs> uh, both Rabbit7 and Bitdefender uh, may, are, may identify and detect potential security breaches. This kind of tests Rabbit7 and, and Bitdefender as long as they, don't, they report it and don't try to turn around and block or destroy access and files. That's my biggest concern. Uh, Rabbit7 SOC will be notified of the dates of the penetration test. Uh, they will record alerts and actions and detection, but they will not take any steps to remove the compromised computers from the network. Rapid7 will provide reports and security vulnerabilities that were detected but not acted upon. And Bitdefender ATM will remain in a current configured state. Bitdefender incidents will be recorded. The ATM software may inoculate actions taken during the penetration test to thwart the actions. It did do this last time when Foresight did it, and it was good enough where it didn't actually, like, inoculate critical files off the system. It right. just killed the, the actual attack coming in, um, which was done on the 2022 study. Budget, 19,500 has been allocated for the project. This will cover the cost of the external penetration test. It does not cover any testing. It does not cover testing of every device on the internal network. Uh, the priority is on external testing, firewalls, if major issues are discovered with the new Fortinet firewalls, uh, this may require TPX to make major changes to the policies and the configurations. This could lead to unexpected uh, consulting costs. Um, it is expected that most of the costs will be covered under the existing TPX services contract and under their maintenance agreement. And 2023 unused capital has yet to be covered by the 2024 budget. Uh, the encumbrance is extremely late and there are serious questions as to what will ever happen. Uh, there's very little additional funds that can be allocated to uh, a widespread remediation if necessary. 
That's more of a side note. I did not get my carbon bunny for this year. I don't know where it went, but it's not where I want it. We have uh, three proposals, Kanaka Minolta, Stratus IP, and Foresight. Foresight was last in there. They wanted more hard numbers of what the exact IP addresses, uh, addresses were, but they did at the end actually give me a full proposal for it. Uh, Kanaka Minolta, I understand, remember them with All Covered. All Covered was the um, SOC, MDR, and SIEM product that we looked uh, as a competitor. For Rapid7, uh, this will involve 15 days of testing. Um, they will test the entire uh, address range of 64 IP addresses. Uh, they will do up to 650 internal hosts. It is over budget. Um, the external cost is in budget of 12,600, but they would have to bring down their cost for the internal penetration test and only do what we actually have the funds to turn around and do by using a sampling method instead of all yep. 650 hosts for it. <clears throat> I think they actually did give a sample report also there too of what, what the eventual end report would look like. Uh, Stratus IP uh, is going to do 10 to 14 days of testing. Uh, 50 external IP addresses will be tested for their proposal. Uh, up to 635 internal hosts. I can't remember how we got that number. 635. Uh, recommended penetration testing. Uh, they normally like to do the external penetration test on month one, and then they do the um, internal on, on, on version six. They actually do send a laptop over here to give us, uh, instead of build, us building a virtual machine and, and putting software on it, they actually do ship a laptop in it. We're supposed to have that hooked up whenever we want to do penetration tests. It is a three year contract. So when we sign up for them this is going to be every single year three-year engagement where you're going to get both a penetration test and an internal terminal penetration test year one and that continues on for for three years uh total cost was seventeen thousand nine hundred and forty dollars and then there is an optional professional services charge for one thousand four hundred and ninety five and i cannot remember because i have not looked at the proposals on my vacation uh, to two per month, but that's really close to what we actually have budget. And then Foresight, the one we did from last year, or uh, excuse me, 2022, uh, services and report, reports are, spo are supposed to be exactly identical. Their methodology is going to be exactly uh, identical for what they were doing. Uh, they're going to be looking at 20 active IP addresses. Based upon what I know, 10 and 10 that we have out there, that probably is going to have to go up. So I think it's going to be about 29, maybe 30 IP addresses, but right now we're saying 20 for $5,227. Uh, internal, uh, this they, they're looking at a monthly uh, vulnerability management on a monthly basis of 500 devices, both internal and external for 20,100. Um, I don't really need to have them do a constant internal penetration test. Uh, they want me to get onto a constant program of testing for vulnerabilities on that. I just need to sweep every one, one year, not this continual thing. So I'm not really all that interested in that, that 20 grand figure on it. And there is overlap because we already have with Rapid7 Insight VM that they gave us. If I wanted to do an internal penetration test, and look at a vulnerability, if I want to look at a vulnerability scan, uh, I would then just be using Insight VM. I don't really need to go with a, another service to do vulnerability management, and I'm getting that, that actually for free for it. So we have three proposals up there for it. I'm perfectly fine with any one of them at this, at this point. Question is without creating a great big huge matrix like I normally do and do weighted scale and, and grading, is there any recommendation or thoughts on a specific vendor other than they have to keep it within budget over the other ones? Well, you just want to do the external? External is required, internal would be nice. Otherwise, it's technically scheduled for next year. Yeah. And it sounds like a 
sort of structurally, Tanaka Minolta is the one-time execution. Correct. Stratus is a three-year commitment recurring Correct. commitment. And foresight and is foresight is a monthly monthly for scan. internal. Yeah. But pay once for external. Yeah. And you don't really need that level of internal monthly repetitive. Correct. I mean, I agree on your approach to prioritize external. I would put the NATED addresses at the highest priority level. We're trying. Now, one of the reasons why we're doing this is one of the things we want to do is try to get rid of some of the NATED. Yes. I think probably I mean, the biggest sin is the Exchange <laughs> Server, which is supposed to go to the cloud in Q4. Yeah, I mean, that's, 365. that's the ultimate mitigation, right? Just get rid of I mean, from a vendor, I don't have any specific strong feelings one way or the other. Would there be, I don't know if you have an opinion on this, is there value in choosing a different vendor than Foresight because yes. you might yeah. get different? I mean, it's kind of, you know, you look at vulnerability scanners mm -hmm. or AV scanning right on endpoints, right. having periodically change them out mm -hmm. just for that fact, I think is a good thing. Um, I think it also builds, you know, your poten your potential business partners, right? If you go with another vendor for this, um, you know, I think those are some of the benefits, Greg, that I can think of. And the total cost for Stratus, just to be so clear, total cost is a one time for the three years, or that's a recurring cost that you're going to have to put in the budget every year. Yeah, that's. I think that's recurring cost. Okay. For internal scanning, how much of a problem do you have with people plugging um, their own device? We normally, you're yeah, they normally are not turning around and plugging them in on the wired network. If they're going anywhere, they're going over to the UF guest okay. network, and, which gives them internet and only an internet, and they're just connecting wirelessly to see UF guest. Good question. Right. Well, it, it comes from experience. We found that certain members of my engineering staff were plugging strange devices into the corporate network. <laughs> and um, they opened up so many different security holes. And some of these devices were sitting there for years. People had forgotten all about them. And it wasn't until we did an internal yeah. scan mm -hmm. that it, they popped up. Yep. And then what are they used for? Yep. They, were, they were doing licensing. No. They were accepting payment. And, and doing licensing for software. <laughs> <laughs> or, or bridging a lab network to the corporate network. That's always a good you know, one. It, uh, Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> well, they, you know, I have to applaud them for their ingenuity, but from a security perspective, yeah. they had that. Yeah. They had left holes all over the network. Yeah, yeah. So, I, so if we, well, go ahead. I, I think that was a great question, Greg, you had on Stratus. I guess they would... My personal opinion from a dollar's perspective, I think you're going to get very similar services from the other two. That to go with a three year commitment at that dollar cost each year, to me, that puts them at the bottom of the list, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And I know Conic and Benolta from the security penetration testing, I mean, they got their own MDR, they got their own SOC um, out there for it. So I, I know these are highly qualified engineers. Were we planning and, on doing external every year? External every two years. Yeah. So, so it landed this year because we're replacing the firewalls. Yeah. So Stratus is forcing us to do something that it's not even right. required really in our plan, yeah. required in our plan. Yeah. Correct. Jim, did you say Conoco Minolta gave you like sample end reports? Sample output. Yeah, I think it's, it's out on box.com. Oh, they are? Yeah. Okay. So if you if you kind of use the the 
deductive reasoning that we're coming to is you don't need the stratus for your commitment. Plus, it also encumbers money that you might want to use for something else. You foresight you used last time, nothing wrong with them. But if you want to get sort of that variation, then you're down to Konica and Minolta. Three of them are probably using the same scanning. Engine. They they could very well be <laughs> right, exactly yeah, right. Same tools because they certainly don't tools present themselves tool. no. and maintain it. But ultimately, the choice is yours, not this. Not the like I said, I'd be happy with all three. Technology Commission is not going to tell you which vendor to pick. Just like we didn't tell the other departments what vendor to pick. <laughs> I, I help you through the thinking, but yeah, right. it's but not. we are making a recommendation on variation. Yes, I think so. Variation right. of vendor. Yes. Variation of vendor. Yeah. yeah. And I can definitely see Konica and Ulta. That I've I've seen them in their other proposals, particularly with with a replacement for Rapid Seven. Yes, I know. As soon as I open the door with with all covered in this group, they're going to try to. Sway me to give up Rapid Seven, go go to all cover, which may be something I want to look at uh, at, at this point. Uh, all all I have to say is that we do the external penetration test, and they are giving me all sixty four addre four addresses, right. which I think is another advantage of it, yeah. which I found as a benefit. Yeah. Because the internal, they just have to turn around and reduce that number. Otherwise, we defer it for the year. We had something up there on another. Slide about external penetration for the new uh, firewalls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if they find something, we have some additional consulting expenses on our part. Why would that be? Uh, because no, the firewall would be a, a standard. They remember the managed, it is a managed services firewall agreement that we have with TPX. So if they do find something, I have to open up a ticket and it's up to the service and maintenance agreement for them. Turn around and remediate. So it'll be a zero cost. It's just as time from the, I would have to turn around and engage okay. with, that's what I meant by it, is I would have to spend my time and effort with their firewall team remediating it on, on the Fortinet firewalls to guarantee the design. Yeah, I would hope that the firewall vendor would have had But it would not cost right. us penetration mm -hmm. testing and not charge us. Right, or a standard set of hardening processes they right, go to. Right when they deploy a new firewall for a, a client. As I go into the director's notes, one of the things that we did run into with the migration of Palo Alto to firewall to Fortinet, we we were originally anticipating just me taking a dump of the original configuration of the Palo Alto, running it through a conversion tool and then being able to directly import it into Fortinet. It didn't work. <laughs> it it gloriously blew up. And we literally had to turn around and look at each firewall rule. That's what I spent two weeks last week, Monday and Tuesday, mm -hmm. doing. Sitting down there with a consultant, going through every single one of the firewall rules and the configuration. We have to manually configure the firewall to do this because the conversion tools. That's another reason why I really want the penetration test to guarantee that he didn't forget something. Right. Yep. But I, serendipity, right? My opinion. You doing that manual in-depth review, I think, is a good thing. Well, it did go through a couple of rules, too, where yep. ha having it in here, it's like, there are a couple of rules that's like, boy, this thing really needs to be tightened down. Yep, there you go. So. Good pain. Yes. <laughs> so you want a motion. But you want to make a motion on I mean... I think I'm speaking on behalf of you too. I make the motion that You'll see we recommend the Technology Commission recommends Konica Minolta for the next penetration testing. I second that. Okay. Discussion on the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 You want the job? <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> mm. I scribbled here. 
Now, part of the reason we were going to review this product matrix for the new members. Not here. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. Yeah. We could defer it till the next meeting. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'll make I'm a motion to defer it. Motion to defer. I'll second that. I write it second. <laughs> And all those in favor of to the deferral? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, we'll defer that. happening faster. Let's turn down out of here by seven. Okay. Yeah, it's not. So good. we're we're close. Who seconded? Okay. Uh, then we have a technical issues review. And director's report on IT operations. Lots and lots of stuff. I actually had to skip quite a bit. Uh, technical issues review. City of Franklin is obtaining a quote for migration services, importing the data center environment from VMware 6.5 to version 8. Whatever it is now. Uh, assuming it's correctly feasible on our, our version. Uh, VMware was recently acquired by Broadcom, who is building out security and data infrastructure services. Broadcom previously acquired Symantec, that from our old uh, Mimecast, and that's why we moved over to Mimecast. Uh, Broadcom has announced major price increases, price increases and depreciate, deprecation of previous products and platforms. Hence, IT is attempting to accelerate moving to the latest version as soon as possible. Uh, this will require a new version of VMware vCenter, new hardware, which we already have, and connecting all VMFS SAN volumes over to the new environment. Uh, the main stumbling block is fiber channel addressing and transparently moving SAN volumes without using, the, without using fiber channel switches, which we do not have. Uh, storage migration will be the biggest technical challenge within the migration process. So I'm eliciting vendors and then have to, having to figure out a way to pay. On the director's notes for operations, on April 8th, City Hall and the Public Library migrated off the Avaya and are performing all phone routing and voicemail within the Ring Central cloud. As part of the migration, new system attendants were put in place in both locations, which should reduce the number of calls transferred and redirected calls. This was a massive undertaking that required detailed phone analysis of all DID numbers owned by the city and having AT&T port the necessary numbers over to Ring Central. Brand new phones were deployed by the IT department and users had to be trained on all the poly equipment. Uh, the conversion thus far has eliminated four PBXs from the city's infrastructure. Phones that need to be remain on analog lines require the installation of new Cisco APAs, which have to be punched down with cross connects on the 66 and 100 blocks. The police department is the last site to convert. This will be accomplished after crucial Personnel return from medical relief, medical leave and phone routing to the PD Vesta system is fully understood. So I'm waiting basically for people to return. Uh, the migration did include uh, the deployment of the Ring Central desktop client, which can be used as a soft phone, voicemail, faxing, texting, and video conferencing services. Uh, TPX and Cornerstone have now successfully installed all the replacement Fortinet firewalls and connected the devices to the fiber optic ring. The vendor has created new security policies and NAT translation rules for the firewalls manually, as it was impossible to perform an automatic conversion of the files using conversion tools. On April 10th, the Franklin School District approved the co-location memorandum of understanding, and on April 17th, new rack and firewalls were installed in the district's ECC building. WiskNet installed the Cisco ASR router on 419, and, uh, and provided internet services to all firewalls on the ring through the ECC. On, five, on May 1st and May 2nd, a dress rehearsal will be formed at each facility in order to confirm internet access on the ring and basic LAN connectivity. A preliminary date of, five of May 22nd is planned to cover over all internet access to the new fiber ring. That may slide, depending on what we find, but that's the end goal. On March 12th, the police, Franklin Police Department installed a brand new site level UPS and power transfer switches. This required a full power outage of everything in the data center. This was the first time in eight years that all equipment in the data center had to be fully powered off. 
Within 45 minutes, its power restoration of all systems at the PD was back to full operation. Uh, the the three-par sand did blow a power supply during the cutover, but other than this, there were no other major problems. On March 14th, the police department converted from Spectrum Coax to Fiber Internet Services. Spectrum Connection, uh, excuse me, fights. Spectrum Connection will be a secondary connection to the fiber optic WAN uh, cutover using SD WAN. Spectrum screwed up and introduced an IP address conflict that took down the water utility about 45 minutes. The problem was quickly identified and resolved. All coax equipment at the PD has now been removed. Uh, a new 2024 No Before campaign has been pushed out using a six-week training window. I have yet to complete mine. Uh, the new campaign required all employees to complete six Security Foundation training videos as part of their annual training. With phishing attacks anticipated for the upcoming election, the security training may hold a considerable benefit uh, in having users recognize phishing and social engineering attacks and thwarting them by refusing to click hostile links. Note, I can create additional campaigns as necessary as well. We're not actually using our subscription. Good. Question? Thank you. Okay. Uh, future agenda items, uh, IT security project. What's that one versus what we just talked about? Trying to find another. Is that new policies? Um, that actually is not the Johnson Controls project. The IT, which should be IT physical oh, security oh, project, I got was it. all door oh. access controls. Yeah, Johnson yeah, yeah. Controls is now taking on a big proposal of energy efficiency, HVAC repairment. I just talked to them about putting in a new door access control system over here and then looking at possible grants and such to help pay for it in other, other places. Okay. All right. And then uh, we'll bring the... Uh, the risk watch matrix forward yep. for next meeting or a future meeting. Uh, we currently have uh, May 22nd at 6 p.m. I won't be here. Out. That is supposed to be the conversion day. <laughs> <laughs> if we say to it, it'll be a very exciting day. So that may get rescheduled or okay. we may be skipping it depending I, on how it goes. I would, I would recommend it. <laughs> it's my birthday. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I was hoping for, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was hoping for cake. I'll invite you to the party. <laughs> oh, I, I, I was hoping for cocktails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Celebrate the conversion and. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, we can look at a new date. Uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. I'll second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank awesome. you.